All right, folks, we need to discuss the Brett Kavanaugh confirmation hearings and, and what a circus. Uh, the media, the Senate, Democrats, it is turned into just a frenzy. So we're going to have Alex Snicker with us. Let's break this down and talk this through. Alex, how are you? I'm doing all right, all things considered. Well, you know, let's let's start with the first element of this, and that is just Ford, um, the believability, uh, the accusation parts. What are your thoughts on all of that? I don't want to get to like how that matters or not. Just this is just the general uh, context of, of of her story and all the different questioning that kind of put her on the spot. I mean, what is your general feeling and thoughts on all of this? Look, I think that maybe something happened, but I don't think that she was able to provide enough uh, evidence nor enough corroboration to be credible or believable. Yeah, no, I mean, obviously, so, yeah, that was quick. We, we, we definitely can be 100% in agreement that she may have had something happen. Um, she can be believable, but believability and evidence is two different things. And all of the names that she mentioned, her close friend has come out and said, "Listen, I believe her, but I don't remember that happening." So yeah. we we don't we don't we don't happened, we don't have anything. If this would have happened, there would be something else there, and there's nothing else there. There's there's her word against everyone else's word, and the expectation of believability simply because she's a woman in this you know what a Me Too era or whatever. That, that that's the you know that's one of the big problems here is that. You're going. It, this is going to ruin other women that may legitimately have been, you know, sexually assaulted, because they want to put all the chips in on a story that is a story that there's no there's no backup evidence to prove any of it. And you know, the, they can't give a date, but this guy gives a calendar for the whole summer, and somehow he's not telling the truth. Yeah, he's some sort of crazy nerd that like jotted down like incredible weird details from the 80s i don't even know if i have my cap my yearbooks going back that far this dude has these kind of notes and uh I, let me add one other thing to this that i thought really did for some injustice is it's almost like she's not recognizing that they politicized this i'm let, let, let's just assume i'm going to give her some benefit of the doubt and let's just say this friend was even at this gathering even if the friend doesn't remember it reality is this happens to her and in some sort of shameful way or some sort of way, she gets home, doesn't tell anybody, fine. But everything you've done along the way to present that information hasn't helped your case. So, for instance, you go public with the secret letter, but you don't want to be public, even though you have to know you're going to go public because you have an FBI lie detector done. Then you have this story about not wanting to testify and you don't like to fly on airplanes, but then everybody finds out that that's not really truthful, and now you're trying to backpedal like, well, I wanted them to come see you, but we have email proof that they did try to do that, and you didn't want to do that. So you don't help your case and your own credibility, and I'm not saying this takes away from her sexual assault part. I'm just trying to parse this out into the pieces where you become a wishy-washy witness with a story that we have no evidence, no corroboration, we have no dates, locations, all that kind of stuff. So it just becomes such a really sad, pathetic, sketchy mess, and I really feel bad for her because if it did happen or whatever happened to her, um, it's just become so politicized. Well, the, the, the simple fact that the Democrats had this information, when they talked to him, they knew about it. They already told her to secure a lawyer and recommended a lawyer to her to secure, and yet didn't say anything to Kavanaugh until it was all said and done, and then they bring this forward? In my opinion, the Democrats don't believe her, but believed enough of what was going on to use this as a political weapon against them because, in their own words, that we're going to do everything and anything we can to stop this nomination. That's true. Very, very true. So let's, let's go to the, 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 the flip side of this, which is obviously what matters. Does it even matter? And I've actually said all along that this is one of the hardest things for me because – uh, you know, there's as, as there is with many families, uh, I don't want to say most, but there are many families, there's sexual assault in the family, uh, someone close to you. Um, it becomes a very emotional topic to even get into. But reality is, does a drunken event that happened at 17 
um, which was not rape. I can't. I, I, I don't know how many people I've corrected now trying to say this is not a rape allegation. There's no exposure of any body parts. It was just groping and drunkenness and uh, sexual assault has been redefined to include all of that. But that notwithstanding, does something that happens that a drunk teenager in high school and 17 nullify all of the hard work, accomplishments, and whatever that have a have a character and a character resume of witnesses and family that that create a completely different persona or maturity. And I, I got to be honest, man. I, I got to be honest. At the end of the day, I'm like, eh, I don't really care too much. Well, let me say it this way. If there was any corroboration where there was there was a possibility that I thought that this was actually true, then I would think it did it did it did, it did matter that even one incident like that would 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 disqualify someone from holding the office. However, that that there's there's got to be more there than what is being presented. And it's and be, now here's the thing: if if there was some truth to this one then all the other stuff that you're talking about wouldn't be there. It wouldn't be there because there would be – people don't do just do this just one time and then never get caught but then change their ways. You know what I mean? Like, and maybe that could happen. Maybe, possibly, that could happen. But if you look at the rest of, the rest of his life, the rest of his, his, you know, his, his body of, of, of life of work, shows that this is so out of the realm of anything that could have happened that I'm not even going to say, well, even if it, if it did happen, then, you know, then it doesn't matter. I would say that there's no possibility that this could have even happened anyway. So the rest of it kind of proves the point that it didn't happen because there would be other things that would have come up if this is the way he felt and treated women. Uh, so I'm going to, we're going to agree to disagree a little bit in that I, I, That's cool. I, I'm okay in the sense that I can kind of see myself in this guy a little bit in that of, you know, he, he's obviously nerdy. Right. I mean, somebody can get into Yale. So I can see myself in that a little bit. So when we were in school, we were like the nerdy kids that like to party and drink and whatever. But that was different than like the jock parties, the jock parties. You know, people would be in the backseat of vehicles and they're trading partners. And it was really, really crazy, unhinged stuff. And the nerdy parties, we used to really do a lot of that. And to have somebody go through that even though they were doing this regularly, find out that they were a virgin. Maybe they try to fondle some chick. Maybe because she was younger, she was two years younger. i got to be honest, at the end of the day, I think a lot of that could have happened. But like you say, though, even with three or four other ladies trying to say stuff, we ran in those circles, we did this. There's just nothing hung on the guy's neck, man. We got nothing. And I think that if he grows up, we can't, and he, corrupt. We can't corroborate anything, really. They can't corroborate that they knew each other. That's like, true. That's how bad it is. Like, there's not even a corroboration that they actually even knew each other. And, and you, 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 can't, you tell me you can't bring somebody else forward that can corroborate even that you knew each other? Like, it was, like, this is, like, it, I guess the thing is this. And, and let, me, when all, let me also say this. I have problems with Kavanaugh's appointment. I have problems with his viewpoint on the Fourth Amendment. I have problems with his viewpoint on privacy. In a weird way, if I'm looking at this instance, I'm not looking at it for a reason to have him go through. I'm looking at this for a reason to say that he shouldn't go through. Mm. So, like, like, I'm not a person that's even, that's even somebody that supports where he's at on some constitutional issues. But at the same time, I'm almost more apt to support the guy now because anything the Democrats have brought forward has nothing to do with substance and have everything to do with accusations that cannot be corroborated in any way, shape, manner, or form at all. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. He was definitely not my pick on the list of, of you know, the top four to six candidates. Um, he's definitely the more moderate to liberal-leaning type judge that was on that list, and he's definitely more like uh, a Roberts than a Scalia, and that wasn't something I was interested in. Um, yeah. And I have similar concerns that you're saying, as far as a few rulings. I think he, he's very narrow. Um, so as we move forward, so today it's likely that we'll get the committee vote. It's 11 to 10. Uh, there's really no way for the Democrats to stop this. I expect it to go down party lines. Do you pretty much see that being the case for today? Oh, yeah. Oh, no, no. This thing's, he's, they're voting on it today. He's going to get nominated today, and we used to get on the floor, and then we'll go. And then, you know, of course, next week will be the other vote. So. 
Let's look ahead to the, the vote. I don't know when that will go down. They, they're talking over the weekend, having some stuff happen, and then maybe voting Monday. Uh, who knows? But reality is this. We're going to come down to about a half a dozen people, right? There's really only a half a dozen players that are sort of in the mix of deciding this vote. We know that we could probably, you know, put the numbers on both sides, but we've coming down. You've got, you know, a couple of the women on the Republican side, right, Murkowski and Collins. Obviously, uh, Jeff Flake, who, who's retiring, who has no vested interest to the party. He can do whatever he wants to do. He hates Trump. He's motivated for that. Then on the on the left, you have a whole bunch of Democrats that are now in very uh, tenuous challenges in their own states. I will say some of the polling in those states are showing them doing well, so they may not be as lenient to vote for Kavanaugh as they might have been if the, if the polls were showing them behind. Uh, I just wanted your thoughts on that. I think it's going to be close, but I think he's going to pull it through. I think that you're going to lose one or two of the Republicans, but I think you might gain one or two of the Democrats to even it out. But I think at the end of the day, it's going to be, you know, it'll be a razor thin margin, margin, but I think he's going to be nominated. And I think that the, I think that there was less of a chance of him being nominated before this than after this. And I think the reason is because I think the Republicans are now going to view this one as a bellwether vote for any Republican. That if you're a Republican and you vote no, then you're going to be in a huge amount of trouble with the base. And I think the Democrats are in those states that could go Trump's way or that, that, that went Trump's way before. I think they are in a, a, in a pickle, but I think that they're going to, I I don't think that they're going to care as much about pissing off um, the, the Democrat base that's out there because I think even in those states I, I I think that look if you're a Democrat and you don't believe this woman and think that this is a you know this is a you know this is kind of a, a, a really bad politics right now you're never not going to say anything publicly because you would get you know you'd get skewered but I think at the end of the day I think he's going to make it through and I think it's, it's going to be razor close and you may lose one on one side and gain one on the other. Yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, the story goes that, that there's three or four of them that have met. Um, I, I, w I would, my, my gut would tell me that Flake will flip because Flake doesn't care. But you're right in the party allegiance that Collins and Murkowski kind of have to know. If you vote no on this, you re they, re they, will, they will come after you. They will let those states go the other way. I think that Joe Manchin normally, and, he, and on many confirmation votes, he was the one that kind of led leaning away. But he and Joe Donnelly can't risk the sexist label and the attack that would come from the, you know, the refused fascism march uh, in his state and risk losing the seat. So, yeah, I think we're looking at, you know, 51, 50. I mean, if it's a tie, then we can break the tie. I don't know if that that that, that still holds for a Senate confirmation, right, if it's 50. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah pin, pin. No, it's the whole same way. Yeah. So, uh, and I, and, you know, I, I, what happens with McCain's seat? Is there a vote there, or are we actually looking at ninety-nine votes? Do you know? Um, no, I think you're looking at ninety-nine votes. I don't think that okay. because you know there's not a there's not a person there for McCain. I don't think they nominated or they didn't appoint anybody to take that position. Right. So there's so no there's no special empty. election or appointees there. So I think it's ninety-nine votes. So even if they get to fifty, they're still going to be a, they're going to have the majority. So it would actually be, uh, you know. Uh, very tight, but reality, they still have the numbers on their side. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. We're 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 entering a uh, we're getting lower in our level of politics now, and this is almost a you could mark this instance as we've now gone down another level. You could mark Trump's election as or went down a level. This one definitely going down another level from here. I mean, it's going to be ugly, and it's going to be ugly for a long time. So in the eighties, we had. Oh, sorry, it wasn't the 80s, it was the 90s, right? We had borking, right? So, you know, Robert mm -hmm. Bork, yeah, become a verb, right? You can be borked. And then now with the Trump election and now this, um, what does it look like on the other side? So let's just assume this doesn't happen or the next nominee comes along. I mean, this becomes sort of an all bets are off kind of thing, right? I mean, we've kind of like created just a circus even around Supreme Court justice nominations. Yeah, I mean, I think so. Well, I think what one thing you're going to have, and, and again, my opinion on the matter, one thing you're going to have is is that a lot of people are going to turn it down. That they're not, they're going to be fine where they're at. They're not going to want to see their lives get destroyed. So I think you're going to have people that would probably be some of the better people for the position 
are going to turn it down, and that's going to be very unfortunate. But that's what we're going to look in, what we're going to look at moving forward. And I think that's going to happen on both sides. And I do think that I, I think that you're going to see. Hope and hopefully you don't see this, but I think you're going to see a very much a loss of honor when it comes to even this part of the process. And I think that the Democrats have shown that the gloves are off, that there's no, you know, there's no decorum for this anymore. Um, so the votes that were, you know, the, the votes where the Republicans, you know, where Democrats would win an election and then the Republicans, you know, on a Supreme Court nominee would grade it on a different, would grade on a scale of like, is that person able to be, you know, should that person be nominated? Are they, are they, you know, good enough of a juror or a, a judge that they could be nominated that they would normally get a yes vote. So like even Lindsey Graham would vote yes on some of these other picks that the Democrats did because his level of how he would pick this kind of was at a certain level, that's going to go away. And sure. everything will now go down to become just basically a partisan vote um, on even the Supreme Court justices. So it's going to, it, this is only going to heighten the part, partisanism that we currently have in Washington, D.C. So, and this will be the last thing we'll talk about here as we wrap up here. Uh, the uh, the main players on all of this during the hearings, um, obviously we've talked, previously about you know the Cory Booker Spartacus moments and things like that uh, are there any uh, anything that really comes to mind of uh, people that kind of made a name for themselves positive or negative Maisie Hirano or Lindsey Graham for instance I think Lindsey Graham you know because of that that what he did yesterday I think you know, again I look I don't like Lindsey Graham I don't agree with him ideologically on so many different things but even I liked Lindsey Graham on, like, what he did there. And I have probably in, I'm, I can't believe I'm going to say this, maybe a little bit of respect for the guy. I think that people like Cory Booker and Kamala Harris have proven themselves now to just be unserious candidates. But I think that the, you know, I think that the Democrats are going to love what they did. And so these are going to be some of the people that will end up being nominees, possibly for president in 2020. Um, I think they've upped their game on their side of the fence. But I think they've also really shown themselves to be, you know, partisan hacks, for lack of a better term. Um, I think Dianne Feinstein really did a disservice to – to Dianne Feinstein did a disservice to women that are going to put up charges and allegations of sexual harassment and did so on purpose for political gain. And I do think that she, she may not pay a price for that in some aspects, but there's a lot of other women that are going to pay a price for that one, and I think that that's really sad that it goes down this way, and I don't think that the issues are going to, maybe the issues didn't matter anyway, but I think the issues is the other thing that took a complete loss here, is that we could have had a very robust discussion about the Fourth Amendment and the protections there. We could have done that on some constitutional issues, and we lost all of that because of what is what happened with this. Well, Learning what boofing meant in 1982 was way more important than discussing the Fourth Amendment. That's what we all. Well, well there is that. Well, there is that. All right, Alex Snicker. We are. We will watch very closely now as the Brett Kavanaugh uh, confirmation hearing moves forward. We expect a vote today from the uh, committee, and obviously a full Senate vote in the next few days. So we will definitely get together and speak about that. So uh, stay with.